Hello everybody, this video is on the geiger marsden experiment and the Rutherford's atomic model. Before we go through Geiger and Marsden's experiments, it is useful to understand Thomson's atomic model, as this was our understanding of the atom prior to the development of Rutherford's atomic model. Thomson's atomic model was primarily based on his determination of the cathode rays charge to mass ratio and the subsequent discovery of the electron. Thomson proposed that an atom consists of a sea of electrons that is evenly dispersed in a large mass of positive charge. In the atom, he said that the electrons are evenly spread out due to the natural electrostatic repulsion between them. However, these electrons are held together in the atom due to the positive mass. Due to the nature of the atom, this is often referred to as the plum pudding model, where the electrons are represented by the plum in the positive mass, which is represented by the pudding. Geiger and Marsden conducted an experiment involving alpha particles and gold foil to investigate the structure of the atom. In this experiment, they projected a beam of alpha particles, which is helium nucleus, at a thin gold foil. The gold foil in the diagram is surrounded by a fluorescent screen, which allows Geiger and Marsden to visualize the trajectory of the alpha particles. Using Thomson's atomic model, a very simple hypothesis can be made for this experiment, and that is, most alpha particles, if not all, should pass through the gold foil undeflected. That is, they can travel straight through without any deviation in the path. The prediction allowed for a few deflections of small angles due to the presence of electrons that may cause deflections of the alpha particles. However, the deflections, if they occur, will have a very small angle because the electrons have a much smaller mass compared to the alpha particles. And since the positive mass of the atom is neutralized by the negative charges of the electrons, theoretically, it will not cause any deflection of the alpha particles. However, in the experiment, Geiger and Marsden observed that most of the alpha particles passed through the gold foil undeflected, but a few alpha particles were deflected at extreme angles rather than small ones. In this diagram, you can see that majority of the alpha particles pass through in a straight line, shown by this red line here, and a few of them are deflected at various angles, including these ones here, which are deflected at very large angles. These large angle deflections contradicts the prediction made by Thomson's model, as Thomson's model could not account for such a large angle deflection. Geiger and Marsden's experiment observation supports a different model of the atom. In this model of the atom, most of the atom is empty space, but it is characterized by the presence of a central nucleus or region of concentrated positive charge. In this model, when the alpha particle collides with this highly concentrated positive region known as the nucleus, a large deflection will be observed. However, these large deflections only occur in a few alpha particles because it makes up only a small part of the whole atom. Most of the alpha particles will still pass through undeflected or only be deflected at a small angle as the atom is mostly made of empty space. Geiger and Marsden's experiment using the gold foil and alpha particles shows that the Thomson model of the atom is flawed because it cannot explain the few deflections of extreme angles that were seen by Geiger and Marsden. As a result, it led to the development of a new atomic model, which is the Rutherford's atomic model of the atom. Rutherford's atomic model is supported by Geiger and Marsden's gold foil experiment. In this model, Rutherford proposed that an atom consists of a positive center, which is known as a nucleus, and this center has a highly concentrated positive charge. The nucleus is surrounded by much smaller and negatively charged electrons, and additionally, the atom consists of mostly empty space. This is a diagram representing Rutherford's model of the atom. Although Rutherford's model of the atom is superior to Thomson's model, it comes with limitations. The first limitation is that it did not describe the exact orbiting path of the electrons. Rutherford simply said that the central positive nucleus is surrounded by circling electrons. Furthermore, Rutherford could not explain why the electrons remained in the stable orbits. Why are they not attracted towards the positive nucleus due to the electrostatic attraction between the positive nucleus and the negative electrons? The stable nature of the electron's orbit also contradicts Maxwell's electromagnetism theory, whereby he proposed that accelerating electrons 
should produce electromagnetic radiation. If the electrons are circling around the nucleus, they will experience centripetal acceleration. And in other words, they will be producing radiation and therefore eventually crashing into the central nucleus. Lastly, Rutherford's model did not describe the exact content of the nucleus. Although he stated that the nucleus has a positive charge, he did not explain what was responsible for the positive charge. This concludes the video on Rutherford's atomic model.